Hello everybody. This is Becca Harkins from Becca Harkins Art. And today I'm gonna to show you how I do a Dutch pour. Um, I have a white base and I have mixed some earthy tones um, as my pour colors. This is a really, this is a really soft mauve color. Honestly, I mix together a lot of different colors to get this. There's some Liquitex, some golden colors. Um, but basically I started with a magenta, I added some gray, I added some titanium buff that I needed to add some white and some QNAD to tone down the magenta. Here's a really soft uh, turquoise. It's just a turquoise and um, some gray. And this is, um, I actually mix my, my paints a little thicker than some paint pourers recommend for a Dutch pour. Um, when my paints are too thin, I find they just kind of are out of control. <laughs> um, so here you can see that there's, the way I mix my paints, there's just a little bit of a trace. Um, oh, this color is, if I'm being honest, I don't know how, how to pronounce it, so here it is. But this is a Liquitex color. It's like a really, it's a really nice green, in my opinion, and I'm going to use this as my bottom color, which will be probably the most predominant color that shows. Um, I really like that color and then I have been on a kick with my uh, metallics I'm really into mixing copper with gold I have gold mixed up in this bottle because I use gold in pretty much everything so I think I'm actually gonna mix copper up in there too because I seem to be making it over and over again um, but here's the copper color and then that's the Liquitex copper and then I like Liquitex gold I have tried lots and lots of different brands of gold and the Liquitex gold is hands down my favorite. I mix it two, <clears throat> two thirds Floetrol, one third, maybe a little bit more um, paint and then a little bit of water to thin, but not too thin. I find the metallics don't need as much water as some of the other paints. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna pour my, pour my white base here. And this is um, this is actually pretty thick for a Dutch pour. I usually go a little bit thinner, but um, it really annoys me when my base color swallows up my um, my Dutch pour color. So I went a little bit thick on here, and I'm just tilting it around to get an even to get an even coating here. You don't want too much paint on the base when you're doing a Dutch pour or else it will swallow it for sure. Now comes perhaps the most important part, which is choosing my composition. So for this one, I'm going to start down here and I'm going to work my way up like this. I'm going to give it a little stem here so that it has like a bloom in this direction, a bloom in that direction. And then I'm just going to come down in here and give this a little curve. Um, probably inward so it can move in this direction in this direction and then in that direction and I am going to have to be careful down here to make sure I don't have too much paint pull because whenever you're moving paint towards the center of your canvas it can get to be too thick and then you might get results that you don't like so here we go me of hot dogs. <laughs> I think it looks like I'm putting mustard on a hot dog. Every single time it makes me think of hot dogs. Okay, so I'm going to hit this with a blowtorch to try to get some more bubbles out of that pink, which is just saturated with bubbles. All right, 
And then this is the blow dryer I use. I've had a lot of questions about it. It's uh, Jinri, I guess, um, Paris Professional. It's a travel blow dryer and I use it with the air concentrator on it. I do find this works really well. I've tried a few different blow dryers and this is by far my favorite. I even bought a new one recently with a wider air concentrator and I don't know, it just didn't move the paint. Maybe I need more practice with it. Uh, but anyhow, here we go. Um, I'm going to start the blowout and I am going to start up here and work my way into bloom and then I'm going to um, work in different directions, blowing this out, um, probably move this off of the bottom so I don't get too much paint and then I'm going to start by blowing this down and then blow this up into the negative space. Um, initial initial thoughts are I do really like this color palette I think it's really nice for autumn the green with a touch of the copper and the gold together I've got some nice lacing up here um, there's some really nice things going on in this area here where it's starting to sell up oh my goodness the green gradiating into the golds and then opening up into that mauve color <gasps> that's really pretty i will have to be careful to preserve that when i do my finger swipe um so the next thing i like to do is just go in and add a little bit more definition um into the petals and i'm going to use the negative space paint here to pull in um, to create some definition in here so that's what i'm going to do next i'm going to start here because this one just is begging for it let's start to see the shape coming to life like that i'm actually going to create another really other petal shape in here. And I'm going to use my mouth to blow that. 
fill that out and see how that creates like a nice, another nice leaf shape here. satisfied with the way this looks um, I like these I like these little areas like these little baby leaves that are blooming up in here I like to do them in sets of three so I've got a set of three here and a set of three here which just kind of brings the the life and the movement together I've got a set of three here I've got some interesting cells forming in that area um, as I've been fiddling these cells have formed in a really nice way um, I've got this beautiful gradient. Oh, that's going to dry re really nicely. And this is a really beautiful fall colored piece. Um, I, I'm very excited about the way it looks. So um, please, you if you could help me help my YouTube channel, 
um, by liking and subscribing if you wouldn't mind sharing it. Um, that would mean a whole lot to me. And um, I'll make sure to come back and show you the dried piece.